This book of Isaiah, chapter 65 and verse 13. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. I want to give all honor, glory, and infinite praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Makai Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, peace and salutations to the elect, scattered abroad, pushing his truth and sincerity. Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Makai Kodash, Barakatam, to you, Sukwanyam, Wa'akim, Wa'akwath, you know, your elders, your brothers, your sisters, the whole full elect, out there laboring, keeping the commandments to the best of your ability. Giving diligence, make your calling and election sure, and of course, keeping faith in the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His beloved Son, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, in these last days, in these perilous times that we're living in. This is Brother Pashai Ban Yashara, and this will be a quick lesson through the Spirit of Papi Yahweh Shai, you know, going into um, in the midst of famine, Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai will take care of His elect, and Adaran Ratazah. Right, I don't want to say we're part of that number, man. Most high willing, we're part of that number, the elect. You know, we gotta endure, give diligence, make a call in election sure. You see, because it's about to get real bad out here, man. A major famine is about to come upon this earth, man. Major food shortages, man. And not only food, water as well. Right? Because you go to the definition of famine in the Google definition, it says an extreme scarcity of food. If I'm not mistaken, and water, right? An extreme scarcity of food and water. You see, and we watch these different, you know, um, movies like The Road, uh, I Am Legend, The Book of Eli, you know, uh, Mad Max Fury Road. It was another movie I watched, forgot the name of it, man. It was a whole movie based on this a famine, you know, they chopped this girl legs off. It was cannibalism going on in that movie due to a famine. And we see that in the movie The Road, you know, they show that in all these different types, even like, you know, TV shows like The Walking Dead. You know, a lot of shows where, like, it's a post-apocalyptic scene, you know, water and food be scarce. And when they come across it, it's, you know, it's, like, satis you know, satisfying. Like, yes, finally, found some food, found some water, you know. So that's coming to America, Babylon, and great. Because we, right now, we do see gas prices going up, you know. We see um, inflation, you know, food prices are going up. You see that. But we also see what? Uh, food. Salaki so uh, got a phone call, but... um. As I was saying through the spirit, you know, um, food shortages, man, throughout America, Babylon, and Great, there's been a lot of different stores, Walmarts, you know, has been, you know, um, security Cajun meats, steaks, and stuff like that. You know, you've seen different oxtails, $75 for a pack. You know, brothers had dreams about inflation, hyperinflation, when prices just go up, you know, with a, basically the dollar is losing value, man. It's going to lead to, you know, the MOTB. But, Sticking on topic with the food shortages, man. It's been going around all throughout America, Babylon, and Great, man. Empty shelves. It was um, a photo that went, you know, kind of viral when they just showed, like, people, um, businesses was basically putting, like, a whole bunch of chairs to fill up the empty shelves to make it look like the illusion like it wasn't empty, man. You know, and um, the brother Bakwar Moff did a beautiful lesson on this, I believe, yesterday, if I'm not mistaken, man. And um, um, hunger is nothing to play with, man, you know? Being hungry, starving to death, there's nothing to play with, man. I'm going to get some accounts in the scriptures, you know, going into the famine. You know, different times throughout history where major famines, you know, hit, you know, during the Babylonian siege. It was a, a famine in Samaria. Don't forget about the famine in Egypt. But, of course, the Lord blessed Joseph with the beautiful, um, the ability to interpret, you know, King uh, Pharaoh's dream. So, uh, he interpreted and he was prepared for the seven years of famine, Right. But, um, and that's another thing too, it will, it will be a little wise, you know, knowing a famine is coming to, you know, have a little things, but make sure that you don't put your trust in those things uh, at the drop of a dime. You may have to, you know, forsake those things and leave, man, and be on your pilgrimage. As we're in the book of 2nd Urgent 16th chapter, I believe it's what, what, verse 40. So um, I'm reading the title of these articles. I'm not going to read too much into them. You know, it's, it's straight to the point, man. Right. But it's a scripture that also goes into it as well. Let me see if I can find that scripture right quick. But yeah, just stay on your watch. You know, we, we're, we're in them times, man. You know, we're in them times. Let me see. Let me see if I can find this scripture. <clears throat> oh, I spelled that wrong. Salaki Aki. Right here. I believe it's Ezekiel, it's Ezekiel 16. 
Chelsea U16. It's alright, so let me read some of this article, then Lowell and I could come back to that. So this article is entitled Brace for Rationing. Right? Brace for Rationing. Food crisis escalates. EU farmers furious. And before I even get um uh, read some more of that article, let's get a quick preset. That's remind me the scripture in second edges. The uh what scripture is that? The sixth chapter. No, no, no. It was the fifteenth. Second edges fifteen and verse. 13 it says no it's over 12 egypt shall mourn We're talking about modern day egypt as they're in the book of um, revelation 11 chapter and verse 8 and their dead bodies shall lie in that great city which is called sodom and egypt we know why it's called sodom and we now we, we also know why it's called egypt captivity bondage slavery right and you look at the back of the dollar bill it's talking about america america babylon the great right so the modern day egypt is america it says egypt shall mourn and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that the heavenly father shall bring upon it. So Yahweh Bashem Yahshah is about to bring major punishments, right? Major punishments upon the land, the soil of America, Babylon, the great. Verse 13, and, that, and part of that punishment is famine, right? Verse 13, they that till the ground, which are the farmers, shall mourn. Why are they going to mourn? For their seeds shall fail through the blasting in hell and with fearful consolation. Their seeds going to fail them, man. So like I just read in the title of this article, it says EU farmers are furious. They're mourning. They're mad. They're upset because their seeds are failing. You see, it says brace for food rationing, man. And that's a scripture, man. One of the brothers posted. I know it's in the book of Ezekiel, man. Uh, I, I think I believe it's Ezekiel 14, right? If I'm not mistaken, it might be Ezekiel 14 chapter. It'd be the Lord's will. I could find it. But... <sighs> For the time being, let's read some more of his article, get some more precepts. <clears throat> and we got that's why, you know, it's very important to repent, man, and serve you how Bashim Al Shah in these last days because the times is coming. It's gonna get bad, man. People are gonna literally starve to death, and that's one of the worst ways to die, man. Because you know, when you starve to death, your body slowly eats itself away, man. First eats the fats, then eats the muscles, you know, then you, your body become withered away like a stick. You know, then you're dying slowly, thinking about fruits. Of the field man and water you know then and, and as much you're gonna you know people gonna resort to eating other people man and if they can't find nobody they're gonna eat themselves that i'm gonna get all these scriptures through the spirit Lord, i don't want i don't forget so it says the food crisis is escalating more countries are halting exports but even as the eu european union um converges a food crisis meeting they refuse to relax restrictions on farmers similarly uh similarly um, the U.S. is not waiving biofuel mandates even as grain prices explode. It says Christian um, explains that, the, that this crisis is needed to advance the agenda and um, reiterates the priorities for your victory garden to in, um, insulate your family and community from this worldwide food crisis. Right. It says start going today. So it's a worldwide food crisis going on, man. Right. That's, that was that little bit of that article. This one right here says Arab Spring risk flourish as global food prices jump to record high inflation you know prices are going up man you know so like i said i don't want to be this too long straight to the point because we need precepts now so we're gonna get this account <clears throat> right because the main point is lesson is that during the famine yahweh bashim al shai will take care of his elect right so low willing we're part of that number you so-called blacks hispanics native americans you know coming back to your true nationality your god-given nationality as israelites and understanding the truth, the gospel, believing and having faith on Yahweh Shai, enduring, rehearsing righteous acts to the best of your ability, man. Lord willing, we are part of that number of the elect that Yahweh Bashim Al Shai has mercy on in these last days, right? Because there's gonna be people out here dying left and right. All right. <clears throat> so we're gonna get this scripture. Oh, this is the one, Ezekiel 4 and 16. Right, Ezekiel 4 and 16, I believe it's, uh, let's see. Yeah, this is the NOT. Right, this is the NOT. No, NIV, right? Yeah. So I'm going to read the, uh, I'm going to read the King James at first, then I'm going to get the N uh, NIV. It says, Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, behold, I'll break the staff of bread in Jerusalem, and they shall eat bread by weight and with care. And they shall drink water by measure 
and with astonishment, meaning what? Food rationing. Let's go. Let's get the NIV. It says, he then said to me, son of man, I'm about to cut off the food supply in Jerusalem. The people will eat ration food and anxiety and drink ration water in despair, man. Ration water, ra ration food. You know, and we need rations, man. You're saying, you know, you're not really, you're not satisfied. You just get enough. You get enough you need to continue on, man. You see that? But Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah's elect, not got not to go, um, not gonna have to worry about that. You know, because the Lord said we're gonna have abundance, man. We're gonna be good. We're gonna be satisfied. The Lord fed that wicked generation in the wilderness. You know, how much more is he elect today? You know? As a matter of fact, let's get a quick quick precept that it's thought about. The, the book of Matthew, I believe it's the sixth chapter. So this is the book of Matthew, chapter six, and verse twenty-five. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on, is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. So don't take no thought like, damn, what am I gonna eat in that day? You know, major famine is coming, what am I gonna drink? Don't worry about that, man. Let Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah take care of you. Right? That's where faith comes in. Verse 26, behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly father feedeth them. You see, like the brother Bakar Mal made that point. Why aren't birds extinct? <laughs> they don't sit there and go to supermarkets. They don't farm. They don't till the ground. But they're still here. And when a major famine hits, how, how does a bird survive, man? The Lord provides for them, man. The fowls of the air, you know, the beasts of the field. You see? So how much more you? Come on, man. Have faith in Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. It says, Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather to barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not more? Are ye not much better than they? Are you, are you not better than these fowls of the air, man? You're God's chosen, man. You know? Going to the nation of Israel where God's chosen people are willing to be chosen of that chosen, the elect. So if you're part of the elect, you think the Lord will let you starve to death? Come on now. You may have to go, what, a day or two without it? You know, it could be a little quick little test, but you just keep faith and the Lord provide a major food, man. He's not going to give you a ration. He's not going to give you a little bit where you just, you know, get enough to survive. No, he's going to give you enough to be full. You know, because you know what? When you eat, you get energy. You know, you get energy. You be, you know, energized as you go about your day. When you fasten, your, your, your body, your flesh feels weak. When you eat, you got that, you know, you got energy. You see that? Unless you eat too much, now you got, you know, the itis. Right? But in any event, right? When you eat, you get energy. And they show you that in Dragon Ball Z. You know, Goku always eating. You know, next thing you know, he said, I'm, I'm ready now. Let's go, let's go fight. You see that? So that's going to make the elect stand out that much more because you're going to have people out here that's, you know, uh, um, starving to death. You know what I'm saying? Weak. You know, walking real slow, holding a stomach. Then you have this one brother with his wife, his kids, you know, or brother by himself, whatever the case may be, walking, you know, to totally fine, man. A lot of energy, you know, they can be like, what the, what the, you know, they gonna know the Lord is with this brother. They can be like, he just ate a comfortable meal. You know, I used to have crumbs on your, you know, your mustache. Now nah, I'm just playing, but you know, the Lord gonna look out for us, man. You know, the Yahweh Bashim Al Shah gonna give us, he gonna give us fruits. You know, brothers might have a bottle of wine. Brothers gonna have water. Brothers gonna have abundance of food. Man, brother, brothers may get, you know, brought manna from heaven, man. You know, quail. Different type of fishes, you know. Y'all about Shemel Shah gonna look out for us, man. We gotta just gotta believe. Because we don't down it says, Which of you by taking thought can add a one cubit unto a stature? And why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, and they told you not, neither do they spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon knows his glory was not arrayed like when it is. Wherefore, if the heavenly father so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast to the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye little of faith? See, it's all about faith. Take therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of Yahweh Shai, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You see that it says, Take therefore no thought for tomorrow for the morrow. For the morrow should take thought for the things of itself, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof, man. So don't be sitting there worrying and complaining. Don't become don't become a doomsday prepper. And like I mentioned earlier, it is wise to have a little things on the side, but you gotta your focus is what the kingdom of Yahweh Shai, man.
having faith that the Lord will to um, provide for you. You know, it has to be room for miracles, man. You know, so don't take no thought what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink. Y'all by Shemel Shah, he got us, man. That, that's how the Gentiles think. And our people are like to Gentiles, man. The wicked of the nation Israel. And of course, you got actual Gentiles. But you got our people that can be thinking like that, man. Stocking up. What happened to that, prep, that prepper? The FBI raided his whole shit, man. Took all his MREs, you know. Took all his shit, man. And now, he, look, he's through. Because he wanted to broadcast it all on Vice and tell everybody how his prepping styles and shit like that. He's fucking, he's not wise at all, man. If you do that, you do that on, the, on your own, man. Don't sit there and broadcast it on social media platforms, YouTube, make a whole YouTube tutorial about all your, your goods you got stocked up, how much water you got. That's that's putting a target on you, man. You know, society collapsing. Like, okay, I remember that video. He said he lived right there. I think he lived, you know, let me go find him. You see that? Because people going to go door to door, house to house, looking for food and water because of the lack of bread, man. Let's get that next. Right? <clears throat> Which is in the same chapter. In 2nd Edit 15 chapter, let's jump down to the point. It says, verse 18, For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the house shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no petty upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword, and spoil their goods for the, because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. You go into the book of Revelation, the 6th chapter, when it goes to that black horse, you know, people basically, you know, go spend what? A, a, um, a day's wages for bread, man. A day's wages for bread. Now, say if you get paid fifteen dollars an hour, you know you work eight hours a day. You get about like one twenty. You know what I'm saying? You you spending all of that on just a loaf of bread, man. That's how bad it's gonna get. Famine is coming, man. Major famine is coming to America. Bad one, great. Look at this um, account in the book of Second Kings, right? Then we get First Kings with um with Elijah, right? When you get Second Kings six and you jump, you start on um, my verse. 25 watch this <clears throat> and this type of famine gonna happen again this is gonna type this type of activity that's gonna be happening during the famine in america man it says and there was a great famine in samaria and behold they besieged it until an asses which is donkeys right until an ass's head was sold for four score pieces of silver which four score if i'm not mistaken is 80 so 80 pieces of silver score is 20 you know four times 20 is 80 right so it says sold for four score pieces of silver and a fourth part of a of a cab of doves dung, a dove's doodle for five pieces of silver, man. That's how bad the famine was, man. It was eating a donkey's head. It was barely got it barely got any meat on it. If it does have any meat, you know. And then um, doves dung, you know, bird doodle, man, for five pieces of silver, right? And for the um the donkey's head, it was for you know eighty pieces of silver, man. It says. And as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall, there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help my lord, O king. And he said, If the Lord do not help thee, when shall I help thee? <laughs> and that's gonna be a spirit of the prophets in these last days, man. People gonna be begging us for help. You know, people gonna be asking, you know, this is sling in, in New York, you know, they're gonna be asking for PC. You know, can I get PC? Your PC. <laughs> can I get a little bit, man? You know, they may see you eat it and ask you for some. You know, and, and and the Lord have a different spirit upon us in that day, man. You know, we may feel a little bad for them, but they're wicked, man. The Lord is jacking their self for a reason. You see that? Let me ask for some. Yeah, you know, what can I do for you, man? The Lord didn't provide um, provide food for you. You know, why, why should I? You know, the Lord can get mad at me, man. You know, I don't want to taste that, that wrath, man. I don't want to go through what you're going through. You see? And He said, if the Lord Yahweh Hashem Yahshua do not help thee, when shall I help thee? Out of the barn flower. Out of the barn floor or out of the wine press. Watch this. And it says, And the king said unto her, What aileth thee? And she answered, This woman said unto me, Give thy son that we may eat him today. And we will eat my son tomorrow. That's how bad the famine was, man. It was eating the children. That happened during the time of the Babylonians. Our woman saw them when they cooked or boiled or fried their children, man. Our woman, the nation of Israel. You see, they was doing that, man. So let's read on down. Let's read it one more time from the top. It said, And the king said unto her, What aileth thee? And she answered, This woman said unto me, Give thy son that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, Give thy son that we may that we may eat him. And she have hid her son. So she supplanted her. You know? She supplanted her. She said, You want to eat your son today, eat my son tomorrow. They ate, their, they ate her son that day. The next day, she had her own son. You see that? 
And it, and it came to pass when the king heard the words of the woman that he rent his clothes and he passed by upon the wall and the people looked and he, behold, he had sackcloth within upon his flesh. Right. So that was a quick account that was going on during that time and that, during that famine, man, because they besieged Samaria, you know, and uh, man, they, they was eating each other's children, man. So how much more in these last days? Do you think they're not going to eat each other, man? Oh, when you get second 15 chapter, look about the 15 chapter, right? Second 15, they give verse uh, 56. It says, like as thou hast done unto my chosen, save the Lord, even so shall the heavenly father do unto thee and shall deliver thee into, into mischief. Thy children shall die of hunger and thou shalt fall through the sword. Thy city shall be broken down and all thine shall perish with the sword in the field. Watch this. They that be in the mountains shall die of hunger because you can have a lot of people fleeing the cities to go into like mountain areas, areas with, you know, with, with wildlife and, you know, with forest areas or, you know, um, with trees, you know, wilderness areas. Right. It says they that be in the mountains shall die of hunger and eat their own flesh and drink their own blood for very hunger of bread and thirst of water. So they're going to eat their own flesh, drink their own blood. So if they get to the point where they're cutting off their arm. You know, letting it drip, all the blood drip into a bucket so they could drink their blood and they and they b b cooking and, you know, frying their arm. What do you think they can do to other people, man? <laughs> and those are days that's, that's in the mountains, man. How much more the cities, the concrete jungles, man, the urban areas with jig dwells. It's going to get terrible out here in these last days, man. Terrible. But during that time, uh, let's get another quick account. Yahweh Bashem Al Shai gonna deliver his elect. Let's get 1 Kings 17 and the start of verse 1. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord power of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. You see that? So the heavenly falls in the famine. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Chereth, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook and have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So Yahweh Shemel shall commanded birds, ravens to feed the prophet Elijah. You see that during that famine. So the, the heavenly father told the prophet Elijah to tell the king Ahab that he about to bring a famine upon the land. Then the Lord told the prophet Elijah, I got a raven set up to feed you in the midst of that famine. You see that? So the prophet, according to Ezekiel, the third chapter, verse 17, we're giving out that warning, right? We're warning that famine is coming. Now, when a famine comes, the Lord will take care of us like he did the prophet Elijah. Like he did Daniel in the midst of the lion's den. He took care of Jeremiah, you know? So let's read them down. It says, uh, get thee hence, turn thee. No, no, I read that verse four. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook and I've commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So the heavenly father commanded ravens to bring Elijah food, man. You know? So nothing, it's nothing impossible. Yahweh Bashem Shai. It says, so he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Chereth, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. He's eating twice a day, man. Bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. Now, was he saying there, you know, when the birds brought him bread, bread and flesh in the morning, did he sit there and um, eat half of it then save the rest? No, he ate everything that the birds gave him. And then in the evening, they brought him more. He ate everything. Then the next morning, he got more, you know? And he drank of the brook. So it says, and it came to pass out the wild that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying, arise, get thee to um, Zarephath, which belonged to Zidon and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman to sustain thee there. You know, the Lord had a widow woman set up for him. And so he arose and went to um, Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water and a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, as the Lord, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. See, meaning basically what? The house her last meal, right? After we eat this, we're done. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me therefore a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and not to make for thee and for thy son. So he said, I gotta eat first, then doing your son. You know, don't, don't be afraid, man. For thus saith the Lord power of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, 
So the Heavenly Father had it with her food. The food did not waste, man. Neither shall the crews of, of oil fail until the day that the Lord sent it rain upon the earth. So they was good until the Heavenly Father sent rain upon the earth again. And we started verse one again and said, what? They should not be doing no rain these years. So it was for a couple, probably a couple years. Who knows? You don't go into the exact, exact time frame. But, you know, it could have been one year, two years, three years. The, Elijah told her, listen, man, the Lord said what? He going to look out for us until the, he sent rain upon earth again. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and, she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of, of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. You know, so in these last days, brothers, we may have, you know, a, a couple, you know, canned goods left, some bottled water. The Lord have it with him, just never runs out, man. And I remember when I was young, I used to have thoughts like that. Imagine, like, we ate something and it just never runs out. The Lord gonna have that for us, man. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna drink a whole bottle of water. As soon as we put the water back down, it's filled to the top again. We're gonna just praise Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, glorify Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And with that, different miracles like that is going to be happening these last days for the Lord's elect. It's going to boost our faith of that much more and trust more in him. You see that? So if you read down, it says, And it came to pass of these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was sore that there was no breath left in him. So her, her son ended up dying. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of the Most High? Are thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O my Lord, power, hast thou also brought evil upon a widow with whom I sojourned by slaying her son? And he shuts forth, and he shuts himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord, Yahweh Shemal Shai, and said, O Yahweh Shemal Shai, my power, I pray thee, let this child's soul come unto him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came unto him again, and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of the heavenly father, and that the word of the Lord is in thy, in thy mouth is truth. So she said, Lord, you definitely a man of the heavenly father. You definitely a man of the Lord. And that's another thing too, the Lord going to make it known who his chosen are in these last days. Because he's going to take care of his elect. You know, his, his elect not, not got to worry about, you know, um, dying of a famine, man. Did Elijah worry? No, he, he told the woman, don't even be afraid, man. You know, don't be afraid. See how Bashim now Shahi got us, man. So let's end it off with 2nd verse 16. In verse 70. No, verse 73. Then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as a gold in the fire. Here you might be loved, save the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be not afraid, neither doubt, for the Heavenly Father is your guide, and the guide of them will keep my commandments and precepts, save the Lord's power. Let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquity lift up themselves. So Yahweh Bashim al Shah said, What? I'm going to send famine, plagues, tribulation, you know, troubles, you know, but I'm going to deliver you from the same. He told the prophet Elijah, I'm sending the famine, you know, but he, he fed Elijah, man. So he's always going to look out for his prophets, man. He's going to always look out for those that trust and have faith in him. So I'm ending right there. And I praise that Father through the Spirit and Papi Yahweh Shemel Shah. As a matter of fact, Salakia. Let's go back to Isaiah 65 and verse 13. I'm going to read um, through four, to 14. It says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord power, Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. So if you're not serving Yahweh Shemel Shah, you're through, right? It says, Behold, my servant shall drink, but he shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but he shall be ashamed. Behold, my servant shall, sh shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall howl for vexation of spirit. So people gonna be out here vexed, man. Vexed, crying, begging. The Lord ain't gonna, you know, the Lord ain't gonna look, ain't gonna look out for them because they wasn't serving them, man. So and you also get the scripture in second, second chapter, verse 27. You know, we're gonna have Mary, we're gonna be merry and have abundance, man. But others are gonna be weeping sorrowful. But I'm in right there and I pray that the Father through the Spirit and Papi Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. I want to give Kohen Laim La Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai Ba Hashem Yahweh Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and salutations to the elect scattered abroad, pushing His truth and sincerity. Without a message, Shalom. Wa Ba 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 Shalom.